again. Well, it's time for day seven of my advent series. I wonder what's in the box today. Oh, it looks like it's a tea towel. Not very exciting. But then I found some advent calendars have some exciting things and some boring things. But anyway, I don't know why we've got a tea towel. Why would we have a tea towel in here? Ah, well there's a clue. There's a toaster. Hmm, well, I don't really review toasters on this channel. And nor do I review fridge freezers. Hmm, we've got some vegetables. Ah, that's why we've got a tea towel in here. Because in the middle of the tea towel, as you can see, there is a Hoover Ranger Senior. So this dates, this tea towel dates from around the 70s, sometime in the 70s. Because it says on it, Hoover make things better for you. And that was um, a little logo, a little strap line Hoover used in the 70s. So this is a very 70s tea towel. Probably got it free with certain Hoover products. So we have a Hoover toaster. This is a Hoover Space Maker, I think they were called, fridge freezer. And at the top we have a Hoover dishwasher, that could be an auto jet dishwasher. And then we have an automatic deluxe, automatic washing machine there. And finally, well no, nearly finally, at the back here we've got a Hoovermatic deluxe. And right at the front, we have a Hoover iron. And if you remember, I've actually unboxed one of those, so it's high time I got that Hoover iron out and did some ironing. So do you know what? We'll make this advent calendar a little bit more exciting. I'm gonna plug that iron in for the first time. Let's see if it still works after all these years. Hello everyone and welcome to the Ironing Channel, Sky TV's latest network for all you folk that love to iron, and that doesn't include me. Today we'll be looking at a vintage steam and dry iron from a company called Hoover. And here it is in all its resplendent black and chrome glory. Now I've never plugged this vintage iron in, I've had it a while. You can see the unboxing on the iBasic channel on YouTube. Um, I've never put water in it, I've never plugged it in. So this could be my swan song. This could be the very last video you see. I've got some rubber soled shoes on just in case and I've checked my RCD is working. So first of all, I'm going to fill this iron with about 170 millilitres of water and then we'll turn it on and hope for the best. I've read the instruction book and it says that this iron takes 170 cl of water. I think that's what it said. So I'm assuming 170 cl is 170 millilitres. Anyway, just to be safe, I've poured out 150 millilitres of water and I'm going to pop it in here at the front of the iron. So let's do that now. Oops. Oh dear, I'm going to have to go slow with this one. <laughs> this is very... I thought I could just pour it in. You see, normally, well, when I do iron, I use um, a T-Fowl steam generator and you just fill a big tank up from the tap and that'll suit all your ironing from here to eternity. And sometimes, if I'm feeling retro, I get out my Elna press. I used it last, actually, to press an old comic. Got the creases out of it beautifully. So, oh dear. I think we'll... Uh, Rejoin the video when I've actually filled the iron. There we go, finally. That's the iron full of water. To test the iron, I'm going to iron this cotton shirt. And looking at the wash care label, it says two dots for the iron. But looking at Hoover's instruction book, it won't steam when it's only on two dots. So I'm going to start off using it as a dry iron. And I've got the little orange switch in the reverse position, so that's steam off. If you push it forward, it means steam on, but I'm thinking if it's not at such a high temperature, what we might get with the on position is water dripping on the garment. We don't want that, so I'll initially try it in dry steam mode. First of all though, I need to switch it on. So I've got it plugged in, but not actually switched on at the wall. 
Not sure if there's a pilot lamp on this one. Um, I can't see one, which is rather unusual. Most irons did have a pilot light, so I don't know how I'm going to know when it's reached, uh, when it's reached the correct temperature. Maybe something will light up when I plug it in, but I don't think so. Anyway, I'll plug it in and in a few minutes we'll be ready to iron. Well, it's plugged in and uh, it hasn't blown up yet. And it says in the instructions to leave four minutes for it to reach temperature for steam ironing. So because I've selected the two dot setting, it shouldn't take quite so long. Um, now in order to see if it's warming up, rather than touching the sole plate, I'm just going to put this tea towel down. And what I'll do before I try the steam setting, I will actually go over this tea towel because I don't want it spurting out anything onto my clean shirt. And it's possible it might do, although it's an unused new vintage iron, you never know what could be lurking inside. So um, I'm just going to iron. Oh, this, is, this is a very novel experience for me. I wear clothes mainly that you don't require to iron, you know. My work clothes, of course, well, well that's warm. My work clothes are mainly polyester. And the clothes I wear at home are mainly cotton, but I tend to have enough body heat to uh, make the creases fall out of everything I put on, more or less. Now it is starting to smell like an iron and it's definitely warming up. So we'll just wait another couple of minutes and then I'll have an attempt at ironing this shirt. Well, I've left it more than four minutes so it's bound to have reached temperature. So I'm going to, uh, for the first time, try to iron some of this shirt, starting with the collar. Okay, let's rub it a bit on the uh, board first. It's quite a heavy-ish iron compared to probably modern irons. See, it's just dry though, that's the only trouble. I think, um, I think this shirt will be okay if I go up to the three dot setting. There is some plastic stiffeners in this collar, so I'll keep it on the two dot while I'm ironing it. Oh dear. <laughs> I'll turn it, let's turn it to cotton. Maximum. And while I'm waiting for that to reach temp, we'll pop down the old tea towel and just see if we can get any steam out. Ah. It's already steaming a bit. And now it's starting to whiff. Can you smell that? Can you smell this? There's no shot of steam. This is it. <laughs> I don't know if we can even see the steam in here. The steam comes out. Unlike a sort of traditional line with lots of holes, it comes out via that diamond sole plate around that diamond shape and um, disperses through those sort of star shapes or the lines that are coming out there. And you can descale it yourself. There is a screw in the middle and you can remove any scale that builds up. See, it will only steam in this position. Oh, really is ponging. It's not. It's not spitting out anything, so I think it'll be okay to see if I can iron some of this shirt. La da 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 dum, ba bum, bum bum. Have you seen that advert on my channel for the Hoover Steam and Spray Iron? You see, this doesn't have. That was a, a later. I think that might have been from the 60s. That TV ad. This iron is probably from the 70s. I would have thought. But it's um. Quite basic, not having a spray and not having even a pilot light. I can't believe it's not got a pilot light. Well, it's, oops, just how I've just ironed a crease into that, which is what I tend to do when ironing. Oh, it's doing it's doing its doing its job. Oh dear. <laughs> Right, do you know what's happened, folks? All the electric's gone off. Now, all of the electric. Now, 
I'm initially thinking, obviously I can still uh, record because it's on battery. Of course I'm naturally thinking it's this. But it could be a power cut. That would be a coincidence. <laughs> I'll just have to pause and uh, see if it is this iron that's caused the trouble. Well folks, my whole electricity supply tripped. Not just the sockets, not just the lights, everything tripped. And I'm thinking it's got to have something to do with this iron. I'm not sure if it's still working actually. Oh, it is. Right, I'm going to do a little bit more of this. Oh dear. I'm going to do a bit more of this shirt. And then I don't think I'm going to risk using this iron again. I'm assuming it's something to do with this iron. But when it's, when it's working, it's doing a very good job. I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch anything metal. <laughs> Dear. Oh well, these things happen, don't they folks? You have to be careful with vintage stuff. I mean, I just normally plug stuff in straight away. I mean, as you've seen when I've turned vacuums on, I tend to sort of stand well back. But I can never get the creases out of shirts at the bottom, hardly ever. And it seems to be permanently creased. Could do with a spray to damp that bit down. So if the lights go off again, uh, now it's starting to drip, as, as a lot of irons used to do. Even at its highest temperature, it's starting to drip. Right, there we go. <laughs> A blackout again. I'm not going to use this iron again. I don't think. I think it's time I unplugged it and put it back in its box. Well folks, it looks like it's definitely the iron that caused my electricity to trip yet again. So it is unplugged now. So I'll wait for it to cool. I'll empty it and then it's back in the box. It'll just be something to look at. I'm not going to use it again. It's a good job I've got circuit breakers in my house. But anyway, when it worked, it worked very well. But unfortunately, there is definitely something wrong with this iron for it to trip the electric like that. It's still steaming a bit. It's still very hot. That's it for today. Tune in tomorrow for another Advent video. Bye for now.